Uh, so I guess that brings me uh, brings us back to me on number two. Number two on my most anticipated 2020 is drumroll Starship Troopers Terran Commands, <laughs> and I can hear uh, gasping from historical gamer. <laughs> Uh, so yes, this is on my list. Mainly, I, I think I've mentioned this multiple times. I am a horrendous, massive Starship Troopers fan, and that mixed with Slytherin, mixed with a really great strategy game developer, mix that with RTS, and you got a nice cake right there. You got a nice batter for a beautiful cake. So. I'm very excited about this game. It's an RTS set in the Starship Troopers uh, universe. Um, you're going to have hero units. Uh, it's going to be RTS, like I mentioned. You're going to be able to take command of aerial assets. Uh, the graphics that I saw on it, you got to go to YouTube and check out some of the videos. It is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I believe you're commanding squads all the way up to platoons. So it's just it's just incredible uh, from what I've seen. So I'm very excited. It's coming out in 2020, and yes, this is definitely on my uh, I need to call out from work a week <laughs> kind of games. Do you know when in 2020 that's going to be released or projected? I heard I don't know. I heard rumors of like uh, this is not from Slytherin, but I thought I saw rumors on the forums for like uh, uh, the fall or uh, winter. Mm. Okay, good. Um, I'll just jump into my number two real fast. I, this is a game that I don't think has gotten a lot of press. The backstory of this is I have loved every single one of VR Designs games. Every single one of them that I've played. And they, like, I mean, really loved. They've done Advanced Tactics Gold. They've done the Decisive Campaign series, which... Of those, I played a lot of Decisive Campaigns Barbarossa. But Advanced Tactics Gold was probably my favorite game for maybe two or three years of my life. It was the top game. Um, it's an amazing game. And now, VR Designs, uh, Vic, <laughs> is, uh, they're coming out with a new game, and it's called Shadow Empire. This is uh, a 4X-like title. So it's taking some of the game mechanics that people may be familiar with from either of his other, you know, any of his other games. So it looks like it takes a lot of the, like, politics system that he had implemented for dealing with uh, the staff situation in uh, World War II Germany. He's taken a lot of that and put it, well, they, I should say, the whole dev team, the developers have taken that and put it into, you're now landing on a planet and you have to interact with, it, it's, it's like civilization a little bit because you are building up there's a lot of peacetime focus which is n completely new to the vr designs games um anyway i am extremely excited about it and i think it's going to be coming out pretty soon uh i don't i don't uh it's extremely complicated i mean i wouldn't expect anything less from a vr designs game advanced tactics gold i actually created a tutorial series on it because um it's one of those games that i i really want people to be able to get into and it's a little bit it's got a pretty steep learning curve i think um it but it's it's amazing and this new one is i just i was surprised to see how far away from the traditional world war ii style combat that he's gone or they have gone um but from what i've seen i am very excited because they've done a really good job of managing complex mechanics like um, even when you learn more about the game and the little details under the hood, um, that's that's been really exciting to see in Advanced Taxes Gold and a Decisive Campaigns Barbarossa. So I'm expecting that in Shadow Empire, they're going to do an, a phenomenal job expanding really good game mechanics to all the diplomacy and the research side of things. So. Um, they basically taken one of my favorite games, or yeah, definitely one of my favorite games of all time, and they've made it a 4X, so <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I don't want to be, I, I will, I've had my heart broken before, so <laughs> I want to be a little cautious, you know, don't get too hyped, but it's it's my number two, and that's only because my number one is something I've been in waiting for for many, many years. So this is this was a sleeper to me, Shadow Empire.
looking at this game, uh, I am on the Slytherin website, and I'm going to pull a Jerry Maguire moment. You had me at sandbox deep management of your empire and economy. Yeah. And they're, they're very, they have very well established, I would say, good combat mechanics. And the fact that they're taking all that into this new realm is very exciting. Of course, I, you know, I have to be a little bit tentative, a little reserved, because this is new. I don't know if they've done anything with economics and politics and diplomacy. And um, like you have to deal with population management. All these things are new. So we'll see how it goes, but mm. um, if it's any th- if it's anywhere near as successful as I feel their previous games have been, I'm really looking forward to it. So, so Tishi, what uh, what's your second most favorite game for 2020? It might be my number one, but I kind of want to preempt John because I think it'll be his number one. Motherfucker, I know what you're gonna do. <laughs> so I'm gonna say. <laughs> Uh, Grand Tactician the Civil War. Mother! <laughs> well, I'm interested to know what your number one is then. It's funny. Well, this that... was my number one, but I, I know he was going to go before me, so I kind of <laughs> wanted to jump out ahead of him. <laughs> you steal my thunder. Well, tell me um, a little bit about it. I've only heard this title. I feel woefully unfamiliar with this title, considering a lot of people yeah. have mentioned it. So please tell me about so, it. It is, I will say it, I'll make it my number two. And the reason it's my number two, and I'll get this out of the way, is I'm worried they may be trying to do too much and they may be a little over ambitious because this is a small group of, uh, I think this is just mainly one programmer. I mean, the, the developer behind Grand Tactician The Civil War is uh, Oliver Keppelmuller, and he's also listed as the publisher on Steam. So it feels very much like a small, small time project. But basically what this is, is imagine if you had Ajod Civil War 2 from like a grand strategy layer type of a game um, with, I think, a, probably a better polished, better looking UI, a little bit more intuitive. But essentially, it's a grand strategy game where you have to manage, I think, uh, we haven't seen it yet, we haven't actually played it yet, but it looks like based off all the dev diaries and all that, that you have to manage all of sort of the 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 strategic elements of the Civil War, so managing manpower, recruitment, um, there's probably some political elements to this as well. Um, moving your armies across the map of the United States during the Civil War. And then when two armies meet, you go into a tactical battle, and you fight a tactical battle. So, um, you know, sort of the the, the uh, mantra of, like, a Rome total war, because then you go into a, a, a battle map, and you fight a battle out, and I think it's 3D, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, so, essentially, if you took a free-flowing grand strategy campaign of, like, a game like... Um, you know, age odd, and you took the tactical elements of Ultimate General Civil War and you merged them into one game, uh, and that's what this looks like it's trying to be. Additionally, there's things like managing attacks on forts on the blockade, having to actually strangle the South um, by blockading the South or trying to break through the blockade. Um, if you're, if you know, if you're trying to smuggle supplies through the Union blockade as the South. You know, managing all of that, you know, is it's it looks like a huge game. It looks like an incredibly ambitious project. Uh, managing your general officers, managing building your navy as the Union or the Confederacy, all of these different things, and um, you know, it certainly seems epic in 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 sort of a big way. Uh, but again, with a smaller studio, little uneasy on whether they can do all of that effectively. But I guess we'll see. The Everything we've seen so far looks really interesting and encouraging. They did make a game that I think is similar, although I'm imagining this will be much uh, more refined, about the Seven Years' War, um, which came out several years ago. I think it was just called the Seven Years' War. Um, and, and that game... I think I don't know. I haven't I haven't spent a ton of time in that game, but it was very deep. It was very complex as well. I don't think it was as polished as as you would kind of hope or expect for what the Civil War game will end up being. So I, you know, and you know, they they just called that one the Seven Years War. They're they're. It looks like they're intending this to be the beginning of a series. That's what I think the Grand Tactician name is supposed to be for. Um, so I think there's a, a lot of enhancements and changes, but I would imagine the seven years were similar in concept to what they're, they're doing with grain tactician. So, so this isn't, this isn't, um, the civil war two meets, um, what was that civil war game? The ultimate admirals or sorry, ultimate general civil war. 
It's actually both of them together. This is Ultimate General Civil War's Ultimate General Civil War and Ajod's Civil War Two had a baby. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's actually both of them together. I, th- I think that's pretty crazy. I'm gonna kind of jump off and say I feel like this is more of like a scourge of uh, scourge of war Gettysburg kind of thing. Uh, I feel like it's that mixed with. You think that you think the battlefield is going to be that much more complex? Uh, I feel like because so uh, following all the dev diaries and um, the videos and stuff like that. Uh, so yes, this is going to be my number one uh, most anticipated game of 2020. This game has literally blew my mind every time I read a dev diary. The passion and level of detail. And tell me what I missed, by the way, Jean, as well. So. The uh, so I'll just starting from like the the tactical map side, and I'll go to the campaign side. So th- there's a tactical engine, right? So on when you're on the campaign side, and two armies uh, run into each other, it will generate a map of that area, and uh, you're gonna have uh, the armies uh, coming into the map at the the right points. The cool thing about this game is the realism factor. So uh, one thing that I really liked that kind of like kind of impressed me is that commanders will reflect their historical attitudes toward one another. So let's say General A and General B hate each other, but General A is in charge of General B. And General A says, hey, I need you to attack this ridge at 2 o'clock. General B is going to be like, you know what? I hate that motherfucker. Um, I'm going to attack at th- uh, 4 o'clock. And, you know, because I, I feel 4 o'clock is the better. Uh, or, you know, he wants me to go through this valley. I'm going to go over the ridge. And so it's going to affect the gameplay of how that commander reacts to orders uh, so that was one thing that really kind of uh, impressed me. Other things that they're adding is, of course, you have weather effects. You're going to have uh, you can um, the order of battle system. Uh, from what all the screenshots that I've been seeing, it is very detailed, and it's, it looks to be very easy to move troops from like different corps to different um, units. Uh, you develop your leaders over time. Uh, your leaders can also die. So like if you have General Stonewall Jackson and you put him in the front of the line, you're like, hey man, this is Manassas. Stonewall is going to freaking take over the Union and it gets hit and you're saying, oh shit, I just lost Stonewall. It's 1861. I'm fucked. And so stuff like that can happen. Good riddance. Someone Uh, shoot that fucker. (laughs) (laughs) Uh... But uh, other things that I really like and that I'm, that impressed me, the graphics. Uh, so you have the tactical engine and the battles remind me of Scourge of War. But what I really love about it is like, let's say you zoom out in the tactical engine, right? In the tactical battle. It has a paper map, right? And it'll have like red and blue uh, brigade, you know, like red and blue uh, rectangles to identify like you know union or confederate and they will move around this old map but as you zoom in it goes to the actual you know graphical map of like the terrain hills and ridges and stuff like that and it's it's almost like a google maps where you're like zooming in and it's just a, a fine transition like little stuff like that is like holy shit this is beautiful so I mean, I'm just scratching the surface. Uh, there's so much of this game. Um, like you were saying, there is the campaign side where you're going to be able um, to manage the economy. You can do uh, um, General Scott's Great Snake Plan. Uh, the There will be foreign influence um, if you want to, you know. I mean, there's just so much to this game. And I will tell you, like, this game has literally blew my mind multiple times to the point where I'm like, shit, you know what? Instead of a week off, I'm probably going to need to quit my fucking job. <laughs> so, you know, I might, I might be exaggerating just a little bit, but yeah, it's one of the most incredible games I've been following. Okay. Well, I'm glad I could preempt you there. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I really liked your... Uh, the, I'm glad you did it because you, you give a nice uh, kind of like summary of the game. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited about it. But I do think there, there, there's, there's enough in the Seven Years War game that felt like it wasn't polished enough to give me pause, which is probably why yeah. I wouldn't really put it as my number one, my number one game on the list. Not oh. because it doesn't do everything I want it to. I'm just worried about how, like, 
when you actually go through and play the game, are you going to get the experience you're talking about, John? Or are there going to be things that are kind of like, well, damn, this is an amazing idea, but you know what the execution it does it does it does it hit i'm hoping uh even if they I, I think i mentioned in one of the as i was going through like a dev diary even if they fuck it up even if there's tons of bugs and some of the features don't come out even if they come out with three quarters of the features and the game is a buggy mess it will still be an incredible game just based on even a three quarters of those features that? being if the game comes out and it's a buggy mess it's still awesome like, come on, man. I'll be honest, you know, so when I originally played, I forgot what game was it. It might have been Hearts of Iron or back in the 90s, or it might have been Star Wars Rebellion. I think it was Star Wars Rebellion. It was one of the games when I was like a teenager and I, I, I played and it fucking kept crashing like once an hour and it pissed me off, but the game was so engrossing and so immersive and it just won my heart over that I was like, fuck it, it's worth the uh, crash an hour and uh, I believe that uh, those, I, I, don't, I believe it's Star Wars Rebellion. One, that game I still play to this day because it's that amazing. Obviously it doesn't crash <laughs> like it did before, but even if the game is a buggy mess, look at, I, I always kind of like, I always kind of look at the games that are currently being released. Like a good example is uh, Battlefront, right? Star Wars Battlefront that came in a couple years ago. When the game came out, it was it was just horrible. Like it got negative reviews. But over the last two years, the game has been refined with patches, DLCs. And every time I talk to my friends, like, dude, you got to play Battlefront. It's incredible. I'm like, I thought that game sucked at launch. They're like, yeah, but it's incredible now. So even if they do launch the game and, you know, it is buggy and not all the features implemented, over time, you know, they'll fulfill that and it'll be that incredible game that everybody's talking about. I have a question. Um, what is, is the focus more on the strategic layer or is it more on the tactical? It looks, I'm just looking at, like Steam, the screenshots available. It looks like the focus is more on the tactical. Is that the impression you guys have? I don't think it's focused on the tactical. I think that the tactical is the part of the game that they had done first, and the strategic part of the game was where they were doing a lot of new development, and they were still figuring things out at the time they started doing some of the promotional stuff. Um, if okay. yeah, honestly, if you even look at it, like they had mentioned certain specific historical battles, I'm wondering how much their focus pivoted mid development, because to me, it felt like it was a little bit of ultimate general civil war where the idea originally might've been like, Hey, you've got these 15 historical battles that you fight through in sort of a, a chain and, and maybe somewhat early on they changed, changed the focus, but they had already built a lot of the, the battle mechanics, which is fine. Cause I don't think any of that necessarily plugs into how the strategic game works. Um, but that was my impression is that they just, they had the, the, the tactical battle stuff more fleshed out while they were still figuring out some of the strategic stuff. Hmm. Okay. And they, uh, they already delayed the game. So that really gives me confidence <laughs> that they were saying, <laughs> um, it, no, it does because you know, Jean it, no, to be honest, it does. Everything is awesome. Podcast. <laughs> You'll find a way to spin a delay <laughs> as like a, a pro. Thank God they delayed it. <laughs> I'm going to do a Bill and Ted's like, it's totally awesome, dude. No, listen, guys. The fact that it's delayed means it's awesome. What? I'll, I'll, I'll give you the uh, reasoning behind that. So, you know, when a, ga- a developer, when they announced the delay of this game, they were saying like, hey, we implemented a lot. The game is pretty much done, but we want to kind of make sure and kind of just basically keep enhancing, keep flushing out the bugs, you know, kind of making the game just perfect, you know, keep basically enhancing and, uh, and knocking out the bugs. That's why they deleted it to summer 2020 is they were planning to release, I believe, at the end of 2019. They're like, look, we're going to take another half a year. We're going to knock out all these bugs. Uh, we're going to make sure that when we release the game, it's released properly. And that really impressed me. So it's that they could have just released it and say, hey, look, there's bugs in this game. Um, but here it is. We'll fix it over time. But like, look, this is our baby, and we want to make sure that when it releases, it releases right. And I that I that really impressed. Me. I mean, I respect I respect a developer who um, delays a little bit, possibly taking some hit on them on themselves or not getting funds back as quickly uh, to polish things. But uh, this can obviously be taken too far. I mean, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this game called Star Citizen. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I also, so I, I think that part of my unease, you're, you're right. Obviously, if it's a buggy mess, they should not release it until it's not a buggy mess. Every bit of software is going to have some bugs, but like it needs to be playable. My concern is more of that, did it get delayed because when they went to kind of put things together, they realized, oh God, we took on way too much. Like that That's where my hesitancy to say like, are they trying to do too much with with too limited a resources? It's one thing to say like, oh, paradox, they're gonna bug, they're gonna patch their games over time, or you know, dice, they're gonna patch Battlefront over. Is it dice? Whoever does Battlefront, they're gonna they're gonna patch this over time, and it's gonna you know, it's gonna be great. Well, yeah, but those are multi million dollar companies with the resources to do that. These guys aren't that. So it, again. I, I view development of a game when you're a smaller studio as much more iterative. And if you try to hit a home run in your first at bat with a game like this, there's a very big risk you're going to miss and you're going to miss bad. And I, I don't want it to come down as me being overly negative about this because this is on my list at number two for a reason. I just, I'm trying to temper expectations. And when you tell me we had to delay the game for six months because it wasn't, it was too buggy. It wasn't polished enough. It just makes me worried that they put it together and then they, you know, they realized that this wasn't even close to done. And are they even going to be able to address all the bugs, all the issues that they found? Or are they just going to, you know, sort of slap together so that it, it kind of functions, right? So I, we don't need to spend time arguing about, about you know, why, why you think it's going to be perfect. And, and, I, and I'm a little bit less sanguine. I mean, obviously, you know, I hope you're right, John. I just, I, I get a little bit uneasy about it, but, but you know, hey, I'm excited about it. I, I want this to be a huge success. I think what they're trying to do is what every Civil War game fan has wanted for a long time, and really we haven't experienced. Uh, Ultimate General Civil War had a campaign, but it was kind of more like Civil War Generals 2, where there are these linked battles, and there's very limited ability to influence the following battles. Um, Scourge of War had a great tactical engine, but it was focused on an individual battle or individual scenarios within battles. And so you couldn't really experience the, the campaigning aspect of it. Um, you know, other games like um, Fort Sumter to Appomattox, which was this, this really old, like 1990s civil war game had a lot of the grand strategy element. Uh, and you know, you could manage your armies like in, in many ways, I see what they're doing strategically is the same as that. Except when two armies met, there was no real tactical tactical engagement. I think there have been a few bat few games that have, have had that tactical layer, but they've always been, you know, they were a long time ago. So we haven't seen that since sort of the adoption of 3D. Just, you know, we'll see. Uh, I, I want it to be great. I want to be excited about it, and I am, but we'll see what comes out of it. But that being said, why don't we move on to your uh, your number one?